studios in New York City. This is Charlie Rose. It has been said that more than any other artist, the conductor must be a mastermind with an imagination capable of materializing a musical image. Joining me now, three of the great virtuosos at the podium today, Kurt Mazur, music director and conductor of the New York Philharmonic, Valery Gergiev, artistic director and principal conductor of the Cure of Opera and principal guest conductor of the Metropolitan Opera, and Leonard Slatkin, music director and conductor of the National Symphony Orchestra in Washington, D.C. I am pleased. The racial capacity of a religious leader and, of course, a musicianship, except his reading of a given go. Mm -hmm. Go. What's essential about being a conductor? I think it's good not to be able to speak sometimes. So you have to do a lot of things and you can't speak. You speak at the rehearsals and after that there is a concert, there's an audience and you, are, you just have to do something what people will read and understand and get excited but uh, you can't really tell them in words what you think is the symphony about or what is the beauty of this moment. So I find it quite magical and quite in, intriguing, you know, to go into this field and try to do something, mm. yeah. especially with the great orchestras. I agree mm. with my mm. because it's enormous potential the orchestras have. You have to release this potential rather than block it. Yeah. Well, I come from the small place, as Mr. Mazur is, uh, from Caucasus, North Ossetian region, it's a mm -hmm. republic, mm -hmm. autonomous republic. I'm Ossetian myself, not really Russian. Ossetian. Yes, and uh, my first teacher when I was seven, eight years old, she just would say, he has to become a conductor. And for me, it was like an anecdote because I was laughing. I didn't know what is conducting. And when looking at conductors, local conductor was quite a funny man. He made some gestures which for me was so funny to watch and I thought they want me to become the same thing. Yeah. It was very funny and by miracle it happened to me at some point so I started to feel that this is where I belong but it was uh, a lot of you know accidental things and meeting people who were helpful and my first teacher of conducting was instrumental important. They, he just started to play for hands with me Beethoven symphonies and I started to feel something. Was I, I was a pianist I didn't think of conducting myself. I would refuse to think of conducting. Why should I? I mm -hmm. never had a good orchestra before I was 19 years old. Mm -hmm. But by miracle, it started to you know, materialize this. You know, is the piano the best instrument? Look at the a great orchestra, same orchestra. You play one night, same composer, same score. You play the next night, same orchestra same composer, same piece, third night you play. It's going to sound different each night. The shadow and light and a million things, you know, this is art, so you can't copy. You can only make a bad copy, which nobody needs, so you, you better bring your own, and people will maybe take it and respect it. But we, what, what is important here is that we will certainly try to find time and go and listen to each other, and uh, even the same uh, piece to be performed I would be very interested to go and listen to the performances of my colleagues and learn something. But when I go do it myself, I can't try to copy or to repeat because no one will respect it and no one needs it. Mm -hmm. People need different views. That's how the classical music is going to survive forever. Yeah, sure. uh, when, I, when young conduct, I hope it's going to go all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. What do you think? Well, I always think that the orchestra is very good. Even if the orchestra seems to have some small problems, I have to think the orchestra is very good because it doesn't help if you show to the people that there is a, there is a place for disrespect or this, this belief in this cooperation. The people will sense it immediately and it will not give you very best results. Also, you have to know that even the beginning of first rehearsal, the orchestra is not going to listen what you are going to tell them. If you want them to play loud, you just do something like this, they will immediately deliver. You don't have to tell them loud. It's here in your face, in your kind of expression, yeah. hands, if you want them to be magical, soft and whispering, so it's also very, very easy to achieve. If you mm -hmm. trust them, they will take it immediately. So what you have, I think, to remember is that the orchestra is already fine-tuned machine or instrument which you have just to treat very delicately and with respect rather than come and say, now I make it much better than it is. This is a very difficult but position. Yeah. But <laughs> it works at the level that we are... Because 
Because dictatorship oh, is not okay, out. okay, that's what I thought you were saying. I want to make sure I understood. But also, you know, you have to love very much what you do because you can't expect young or professional musicians to do the same if you don't express and show it every second of the every rehearsal. Because if you want them to love the music of Beethoven and do it with you together, you have to love it yourself exactly. so much that people will follow you. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you are. Just Dr. Dr. Wagner. Wagner. Yeah. Uh, we believe that Putz uh, was a phenomenal conductor yeah. because of his recordings, yeah. but there were some other people as well. Oh, yeah, sure. And we don't know in particularly what kind of conductor Mahler is. difference in conducting an operatic orchestra and a Opera symphonic. Is quite a complicated field. Uh, you have so many elements to put them together that even eight out of ten are excellent. You still risk to have some problem because you know, singers not always healthy and technical part is extremely complex and difficult even at the Metropolitan Opera where we work now with the Kirov Opera it takes a lot of time and to, like, a lot of risk to put it together and that it will function ideally but opera is also rewarding so if finally it starts to work it's incredible pleasure what I also want to add to what was said here is that all of us have enormous influences of the people from the past so I remember great conductors who I heard myself live, and they just gave me one of the most unbelievable moments of my life. So of course, your belief and your hope is that, that you can do at least very little, but on the same effect to some other people who are maybe young, who are maybe not belonging to classical music at all, because you remember your own when you are 15 or 20 years old, and you remember this phenomenal you know, impact of great orchestra and conductor which you hear for the first time you know, mm -hmm. this is what counts because we it's like a, you know in the sports everyone should go his own distance and give it to another one and this is how it go forever forever so we take it from the people from the, before us our fathers grandfathers and music and we have to do it and give it yeah. to the next generation this is why maestro mazuris find it so interesting to work with a young orchestra and it's what we try to do time to time even i'm not such an old man but i already think i have to do it and young singers, your question, is more important for me even than to train my orchestra because if the singers from Russia come to the world with a very high level of singing, not only Russian opera, but Italian, German, French, that will help international opera world because it's quite an important uh, area of the opera, you know, Petersburg, Moscow, and it's a big yeah. tradition there. And this is what I find extremely interesting to work in the opera because you see ballet, you see opera, you see choruses, or, uh, designers, directors, huge area of, of, you know, trying something and maybe achieving something. So that's why I stay with opera. Mm. Mm. Seems a little bit beneath. And as much as we love to do the Beethoven symphonies... It's the yeah. same like to, to ask, what is better, France or Italy or Germany? <laughs> All of them together have to exist, and this is the bouquet of mm -hmm. culture. So there is good music in opera, there's good music in the symphony, in the quartet, in the ballet world. Yeah. We want to go ev everywhere, but just to reach it. But do countries have a certain... You mentioned Normandy at the Philadelphia, I mean. And do countries have a certain sound? Is there, no. is there a certain... Uh, they are educated in a different way in Germany. Interesting point. Uh, two weeks ago, I conducted in Baden-Baden for the opening of New Festspiel House in Baden-Baden, ah, yeah, yeah. so-called World Orchestra, mm -hmm. which has best players of you know, Berlin, Vienna, London, Chicago, Philadelphia, New York, uh, Paris, and so on, Tokyo, Russia. And it was very interesting to work with them for three days only, and it was, the concert was televised, because you can see that the language of music is so international that the class of musicians is so high that they can easily take from each other. For example, clarinet from Chicago and from London Symphony, from Orchestra mm -hmm. de Paris. Three schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And after two, three hours, you see the players reacting to each other. So it's international. It's not Esperanto, just to make it easy, but to keep the best of the tradition alive and still to put it together, and it gives you a phenomenal result. And in the string section, it was also very interesting. The, Mendelssohn, you know, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. overture of Midsummer yeah, Night, yeah, yeah. you know, it's very tricky, but the players were so good, impeccable that it was a phenomenal case for me at least to see top players coming together and after two, three minutes, this is a magic of music. The, every ear is open, total concentration from everyone on stage, and in five minutes you have the orchestra which already produces a certain sound from this orchestra coming together practically for the first time. That was a project with George Schulte, 
our mm -hmm. great, great colleague who just died recently right. was putting together and wanted to conduct it. And he picked the players, you know, many from Chicago, from Philadelphia, very good players. But this is the strength of music, I would say. It unites people so rapidly. The conductor has to be aware that he can only destroy it. So this is the main resp <laughs> responsibility for us, not to destroy this fragile, you know, world of, you know, bringing people together and possibly give them a chance to do miracles. Conductor has to be, even Berlioz was saying, conductor can destroy everything. So That's be careful. <laughs> be careful yeah. Can a conductor stifle an orchestra by overpowering them, by Not demanding? Anymore. Not anymore. Mm. That was a long time ago. But we have mm. to say that the, the so-called dictators, they brought yeah. a lot of good also in the past. Toscanini has to be remembered as a phenomenal conductor. Of course. Just uh, put on and it moves. So you have to find how to make the engine work. The score can be very difficult and unpleasant and difficult to bring the message from the composer. So you have to be very, very quick with your fantasy, with your experience put on and work immediately with orchestra's experience. It's, it's one of the most painful processes sometimes to make the new work clear for the audience. Painful? Sometimes painful. Because? Or because the orchestra has to go through certain difficulties and still have they have to feel why we should do it, why this new piece is chosen by the conductor. If it's a good quality, everybody's happy, but if they don't immediately feel that there's a very interesting piece, they are question, questioning conductor, why we do it? We spend yeah. so much time on but it. But we, we all have had it. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say, that even now at the Metropolitan Opera, very famous composer, Prokofiev, but mm. very unfamous opera, Betrovo of the Monastery. So we take a risk to tell the public in America and worldwide, it's very good music. So it's my responsibility. If I do it badly or my company does it badly, people will say, we can't trust this man anymore. We can't trust Kirov Opera mm -hmm. anymore because we can't trust even Metropolitan Opera who presents it. So it's a huge responsibility. You have to say, we're going to do it. That means you say it's very high quality. Otherwise, people are not coming again to listen to you. Mm -hmm. This is what That's is right. sometimes painful. We're intently watching this. I'm not sure you were, Kurt. But <laughs> you were watching this, and you were saying, and you were saying, what were you saying? What was your reaction? First, react you said the cellist is very good. Because yes. you know the orchestra. We react on the tempo, because the tempo sure. is the first principal decision from the conductor. People accept from him the tempo. Yeah. If you want them to go faster, you're going to go slower. So you have to just do it with your hands, with your eyes, and they will accept it, if you can do it well. So, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, so, and I, I thought it was done very well, so I, I immediately reacted. But the, the tempo. tempo. What if the soloist? Artists, such a high quality that you want to follow them, like Placido Domingo, and you don't discuss things with them. You don't discuss with Domingo which tempo you take in every <laughs> bar, in every second of performance. Yes. You follow, but you also hope that he also listens very yes. well, and he does. Exactly. So it's cooperation, which is not theoretical agreement. It's just a life sort of happening, you know. And this is most interesting about opera. With instrumentalists, it's a bit more organized because mm. the literature, the material itself is more organized yeah. than sure, opera sure, performances. Sure, sure.